This is the setup for the cloud thermometer. And what we'll do here is we'll create a table in Amazon's DynamoDB service. And that table will be used to store the temperature values. And then we can read that data from a web page or from other uh, sources to visualize the temperature data. So what you'll need to do before you start this process is create an Amazon Web Services account. And you can do that by going to aws.amazon.com and clicking the sign up button and going through the process. And one thing to note is that during that process, you'll get a special access key and a secret access key. And those two values you want to save and keep in a safe place because you'll need to use those in the cloud thermometer sketch. That's what's used to authenticate you with Amazon and send data to the DynamoDB table. So this process uh, will go and we'll create the table in DynamoDB. So go back to aws.amazon.com and go to the my account slash console link and go to the AWS management console and it might have you sign in. And what this will do is this will actually load all of the Amazon services. So you can see a dashboard that lets you see all the data that you have in different uh, Amazon services here. And the one that we care about is DynamoDB. So click that. And you'll probably see a view like this. Um, if you already have data in Amazon DynamoDB, you might see different tables and things listed here. Um, one thing to note is that Amazon has web services in lots of different data centers. And so up in the far right here, you can choose which data center um, you're dealing with. And so you probably just want to pick the closest data center to you in this case. Um, it's also good to know the pricing can sometimes be different. For our needs here and for our usage, it's very unlikely that you'll uh, fall outside of the free tier where you, you might be charged for access to DynamoDB uh, because the access rate to the, our database is so small, you really shouldn't fall outside of that free tier. So it's just something good to be aware of. So once you choose the region that you want to be in, uh, you'll click the Create Table to go through the table creation process. Now this will pop up a little wizard here that we'll walk through. And the table name, um, you can give this any kind of a name and you can change it in the sketch which table it writes to. I like to use a value like temperatures. And then the primary key, so this is an important step. Uh, there are two different types of primary keys you can set. There's a hash and range key or just a hash key. Now in both these cases, there's a hash option. And so the hash is what identifies data that you write to the database. And in the case of this sketch, the hash is just a string that's a unique identifier for every instance of the temperature monitoring that you run. So for example, if I'm going to cook a turkey, I might set that hash value to uh, turkey roast or something like that. You know, a unique value that I can go back to later and see. Uh, so that's what the hash is. And then the range is an optional part of the primary key which lets you sort all the values in the database based on that range key. So the hash key identifies the data and the range key does the sorting. Uh, and if you don't need any sorting, you can choose this hash option. Now in our case, you want to choose this first option, the hash and range key, because uh, I actually have two columns in the database. The hash is just an ID column that identifies the data. And then the range is the date. And so that's nice because the, the date is the range. When we pull the data from the database, it's going to be sorted for us already uh, based on time. So stick with the first option, hash and range. The hash attribute name, you want to make this a string type. And the name you actually have to set to ID, capital I, lowercase d. And then the range attribute, you'll need to make this a number type uh, because this will actually store the Unix time, which is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. And for this, you need to give it the name date. And so when both of those are set, you'll click continue to go to the next step. Now this step is optional and you don't need to set anything here. You can set up if you know like you need extra indexes on the table. This is for usually pretty advanced tables. Don't worry about setting anything here. Just click continue. Uh, provision throughput capacity. So this is kind of an important step. Um, you won't need to change anything. I would just keep things to the default here. But this is just good to know that this is how Amazon DynamoDB uh, does its pricing. It's based on the throughput, which is the read and write capacity for the table. So by default, this allows you to write and read uh, at one read or one write per second, which is actually pretty high throughput. Uh, I mean, that allows you to read you know, 86,000 times or so uh, a day. And that's way more than we need for um, the, our sketch here. You know, We're only going to write every minute. 
So by default, it's nice with the value of one and one, we should stay within the free tier that Amazon has and not be charged anything. Um, but it's good to know that you know you could be charged maybe 60 cents a month or so for this. Um, in, in our case, it would be very, very surprising if you actually were charged money. I mean, that would mean you'd have to be writing data more than once a second, um, which is very unlikely here. So stick with the defaults and click continue. Throughput alarms, this is good to stick with the default and have it set up a basic alarm here. So this will just send you an email uh, if you get near that throughput capacity limit. So if I'm close to writing uh, once per second or reading once per second, it's going to send me an email. So you can put in your email here. And we'll click continue. And this just gives you a summary here. So it's going to tell you the table, uh, which type of primary key you want the hash and range. The hash key attribute it has a name of ID and a type of string. The range key has a name of date and it's a type of number and then the throughput and capacity that's been provisioned. So click create. And this should take you to a view here where it's going to list all the different tables. You'll see that this table is in a creating status. So that means we can't use it yet. And you'll want to wait until this gets into an active status. You can refresh the page periodically and check. It should take maybe two or three minutes or so, uh, but it might take longer just depending on how Amazon's working. So we'll come back when this is in an active state. Okay, so the table's been created now. It's in an active state. Uh, it only took about a minute, so it's pretty quick. And once the table's created, uh, you can actually go in and click this Explore view. And what this will do is this will list all of the data, all the rows that are in the table. And there's nothing in there now, so there's nothing really good to see. But this is just good to be aware of this interface so that once you actually have temperature data that's been logged to this table, you can go in and see the individual rows. You can even delete and add rows inside of here. So it's just good to be aware of this. Uh, now this is all you need to do to set up the table. So with this done, we can actually configure the sketch to start writing the data. Um, now there's another step that I'll walk you through now that it's not strictly required, but I think you're going to want to do it where we can create a special account that has read-only access to this database table. And the reason you'd want to do that is because if you're making a web page that's going to query this data from the database, and it's going to query that directly from the web page, you need to encode the credentials of some user that has access to the database. Now, you could use your Amazon Web Service account credentials, but that's a really bad idea to put it on a web page because anyone who views the source of that web page will be able to get your credentials, and then they can just go crazy with it. They can start creating services. They can delete your data, just really bad things can happen. So Amazon is nice in that they allow you to set fine-grained access control. So you can create users, you can control what services they have access to, even what data they have access to, and get unique credentials for those users. So I'll walk you through that process now where we'll basically create a group that has read-only access to this table, and then a special user that's a member of that group. And then we'll use that user's credentials later inside of the web page so that it has read-only access to this database table. So you'll want to go up to the services link here, and you'll want to go over to the IAM, that's the account uh, identity and account management. And this will let you walk through some different processes at a really high level. From what I understand, IAM just has a concept of individual users that can be members of different groups, and each group can have different access to data and services like DynamoDB. So what, what, what we'll want to do is create a new group of users. So we'll first create this group that has read-only access to our database. Uh, so we'll give this a unique name. We'll say temperature oops, readers. And we'll click continue. And it's going to give you this really complex dialog here that gives you a whole bunch of different options. Uh, what you'll want to do is click the policy generator. So this will let you walk through making something that has access to a unique service. So we'll click select. And what you can do is you can make a policy that allows access or that denies access. Uh, we'll make one that allows access. And then by default, uh, if someone isn't allowed access, they're not going to have it. So we really just want to allow read-only access here in this case. <clears throat> now for the service, you'll want to go down and select Amazon DynamoDB. For actions, so this is kind of important, you'll need to pick the actions which this members of this group are allowed to uh, do. So there are only a few actions that we actually need these users to have. So let's give them basically all the read actions that uh, we might use. So scan and query. This is how you read items from the database or how you query items. Um, get item is just if you get a unique item. And let's also give them 
uh, list tables access. So the important thing here is you don't want to give them access to call updates or put items, um, you know, or even delete or things like that, um, because that will actually cause problems and allow them to uh, change your data. So your Amazon resource name, this is actually going to be the name of the DynamoDB table. Now there's a special format that you have to use for this. So uh, what we'll do is let's open a new tab and let's go back to aws.amazon.com and we need to go back to our DynamoDB table. So go back, navigate back to DynamoDB, uh, find your table here. If you click on your table, go to this details tab uh, and what you'll do here is you'll actually scroll down and you'll see this Amazon resource name, the ARN, and this is the value that you need to grab. So select this and copy it and go back to the uh, account identity management view here and just paste that in and click add statement. So this is telling me, okay, we're going to create uh, a set of permissions here where users can call get item list tables, query and scan. And it's going to be just for this database table. So we'll click continue. Uh, it's just going to give you a policy name here uh, and a policy document. You can ignore this and just click continue. Uh, so you can add users to this uh, and you can basically, if you have existing users, you can use them or you can create a new user. So let's go ahead and create a new user here. So we'll call this um, temperature read user. And this is important. Make sure that this generate and access key for each user is selected. Uh, this is going to give you the special access tokens that you need to access the DynamoDB service. So click continue. And sorry, my cat is jumping up on me right now, so might need to. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, now click continue again. And in this step, it's created the user, it's created the group, and you'll actually want to click this show user security credentials. Um, I won't do it here, but once you click it, you'll want to copy out both the access key and the special access key that are presented to you. And you'll need to use those in the web page that views data for the database. Okay, and we're back, and now I've got the credentials for that user. So just to see what's available, uh, you can go in and click the groups here. You see I, I already have a group uh, that's been created for just some testing, but here's that temperature readers group that we created. Um, you can click this. You can see all the permissions and the policy associated with it. And then you can also see the users that you have. And so there's that temperature read user that we created uh, and that we should be able to see that they're a member of the temperature readers group. So that just means that anyone inside of that group will have read access to the DynamoDB table that we created. And we can take the credentials for this user and put them into a web page. And we won't need to worry so much that if someone takes those credentials that they might do something malicious and like delete data or create other services. They only have access to read data from our table. So that's all you need to do to set up the DynamoDB table. You basically just need to walk through the table creation process, make sure you create the primary key with the values that we specified in here, and then set up the role and the user that has read-only access.